tennis picks and bets here on the Mayo Media Network. I'm your host, John. You can find me on Twitter at JR Tweets Tennis or over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash tidbits tennis, where we do some analysis and look for live bets sometimes throughout the day while all the action is taking place. Before we get to the day two selections for the U.S. Open, the final Grand Slam of the 2021 tennis season be sure to make you be sure to like this video subscribe to the mayo media network and of course click the bell down below to make sure you're notified when all their videos go live and leave a comment with your favorite bet for day two down below you can also find the audio versions over at daily fantasy sports picks and bets the mix wherever you listen to your podcast make sure to rate review and subscribe there as well day one a little bit of a rocky start tarot daniel not doing the job against Vagas, in fact, didn't even win a set. Very surprising result there for someone who has only played a few matches on hard courts all season in Vagnus to come out and win a best three of five match of the slam. So kudos to him. We'll look to get a bit better on day two. And we'll start with the women. First up, Coco Vandewey, minus two and a half games against Martina Trevisan. Look, this is coming in at minus 110. And frankly, it should be a spread around three and a half to four games at this very price. Coco Vandewey, 0-6 on outdoor hard courts this year. That's the caveat. That's why we're getting the spread and the price we are. Again, a lot of this came at the beginning of the season when Coco was still coming back from an extended break. Uh, we saw on the grass court season, she really started to pick things up, made a run over in England. Now, the summer hard court season hasn't gone according to plan, but two of her losses to Alison Risk, who is a bona fide tour-level player, and Ocean Dodin, again, who's who's starting to emerge as a WT World Tour or WT Tour level player, not just an ITF player, uh, and with a huge serving game, are kind of excusable. And they're not really good comp comparable matches to someone like Martina Trevisan. Trevisan has won a total of five matches this year on the professional circuit, whether it be the WT Tour or down at the ITF Tour. Only one on a hard court. A singular match against Arena Rodionova. She did three sets to do it. And the Aussie is not exactly the best player in the world in her own right. That was in qualifying. The rest all came on all came on clay, where her style generally plays more. She's very defensive, almost no power, and she has only won one match off of clay so far this year. So I'm going to go ahead and side with Coco Vandeweghe. Of course, she had that little hiccup in Landisville at, at a high-level ITF event the other week, had retired in heat stroke, really didn't like what when her opponent forced her to warm up, as was her opponent's right. But she wanted a little more time to recuperate in very, very uh, hot conditions and will ask the other player to, to hit with her coach. They refused. So she kind of, you know, was a little unsportsmanlike and then ended up retiring. That is the only blemish so far that I really consider uh, something to worry about going forward. But again, she's since she's played since then, lost a very close one to a capable Osan Dodin. That fear is somewhat alleviated as we move forward towards this match against Trevisan. She should be able to get it done in quicker conditions on a quicker surface with the much bigger game and pedigree in these conditions. Second match I want to talk about, we go to the men's side and it's Lucas Puy, the Frenchman, on the money line against Albert ramos Vignolas, and he is an underdog at plus 128. Have to side with Puy here. He is someone who has always done better in quicker conditions. Now, coming back from injury this year, it hasn't been his best season. However, if you look at some of his results from the grass season, where, again, you look, quicker surface is going to play for him. He's got that big serve. Or the indoor season, he has pushed a lot of quality players throughout. He pushed Cam Norrie uh, to four sets at Wimbledon, including losing two 7-5. Those are very tight lost sets. He pushed Haran Hachanov, who had... An incredible summer is another top 30 kind of player. Cam Norrie this year has made his way into the top 30 as well. Some very close losses for Puy to take away uh, as almost positive, especially when you apply it to this particular match here on hard courts at the U.S. Open against a, a, a clay quarter like Ramos Mignolos without too much power and who doesn't really do uh, his best work off of the clay courts or slowish hard courts. The U.S. Open courts, not like that, especially the outer courts where this match is likely to take place. I highly doubt you're going to be seeing two unranked, non-seeded players that are not American on one of the show courts in the first round when there are 128 different matches over a two-day uh, span. So again, we can be pretty sure he's going to be on an outside court, uh, which will play quicker and into Lucas Puy's hands a bit more. The bigger serve, more power, the, the ability to hold more. I think the pressure is really going to be on Ramos Vignolas to hold his serve here because he's, he doesn't have the weaponry. He doesn't have quite the power or the comfort on surface. So we'll go ahead and back a dog here who, who has more favorable conditions and who prefers the surface more than his opponent. No problem uh, 
opposing a favorite in this spot, we can get plus money to do it, all things considered. Finally, I want to talk about a match between Dennis Kudla and Lazo Jerry, also from the men's side. Once again, a surface-oriented play here as Dennis Kudla, more familiar with quick courts. He is he's one of the players on, on tour who actually has the biggest discrepancy in terms of his record on slow surfaces, whether it be slow hard courts or clay courts versus quicker surfaces. So medium to medium, fast hard courts to grass courts. He really is a kind of stereo, a, a, a typecast player for quicker courts. He likes the bouncing, the ball bouncing low, but skidding through the court. It's where he generally has uh, his hit zone is far lower than most players. He feels more comfortable and he doesn't like too much time and he doesn't like extended rallies. He can move the ball well. And because he takes it nice and early, he's also able to hit and redirect pace down the line, which is a very effective tactic, um, especially when you're going to be returning against someone like Laszlo Jerry, who, again, the serve here, a very, very clay-oriented player, only a pair of wins on the season so far on outdoor hard courts. He's got a decent first serve. And again, that comes back. That's why I mentioned Dennis Kula able to redirect pace fairly effectively um, will be nice to help neutralize that first serve a bit. But outside of that, as points wear on, Jerry loses a lot in terms of any sort of advantage in his service games because outside of that first serve, just not a lot of weapons for a hard court. Dennis Kudla only at minus four games here, and you're getting, and you only have to pay minus 115 to do it. I would most certainly look at that. I think this should be up around the five, five and a half mark. It should, it should be a fairly straightforward straight sets win. Now we said that about Taro Daniel too, but all things considered, when you look at his opponent, when you look at the surface, when you look at the court speeds, this is one that Dennis Kudla should handle. And I think the folks really should be trying to make you decide whether, you know, make it service or, or uh, service order dependent. Or again, maybe a tie break is in there to make it a five to, to, to six game um, spread. I would have this firmly at five and a half. I think that's where it would be most profitable for the bookmakers. But they hung this number at four. So we will go ahead and lay the four games here. We're more than willing to take a game and a half advantage over the books in my estimation. That is it for day two. We will be back again for more coverage as the second round begins on Wednesday. We'll have those picks for you tomorrow. Thanks for watching, everyone.